All right, guys, we're back in my garage for another video, and today we are going to be talking about suspension. I know this is a video that's been a long time coming, and a lot of you guys have asked me to make this, so hopefully this answers all of the questions that you might have, but this one is specifically going to be about straight line acceleration. I'm going to make a separate video related to handling and kind of if you're going around a road course or anything like that. So I'll link that down in the description if that video has already been posted, but for this video, we'll talk about, you know, drag racing, roll racing, basically any kind of racing that goes in a straight line. So if that's something you're interested, hopefully this video helps you out. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So let's get down into it. This is something for all the guys out there that are worried about their quarter mile time, you know, draggy, 60 to 130, 100 to 200, all of those things. I'm seeing more and more people run into issues because it's so easy to add power to our cars. Maybe this is, you know, the highest horsepower car you've ever owned and you're struggling with grip or just wondering why you're not able to hit the same times as somebody else with similar mods. So Hopefully this video will kind of help you understand different things that you can do to help improve the performance of your car without changing anything in the engine or reducing any weight, strictly just optimizing your suspension so that you can have a good amount of grip and get your car rolling really quickly. Now, the first and most important thing to understand is suspension is not a magic trick. The most important thing is having a really good tire setup. If you're drag racing or roll racing, Typically, you want a relatively small wheel with a relatively tall tire that will allow you to lower the tire pressure so you can get a really big tire patch on the ground and give you as much grip as possible. But also, it'll help you just accelerate more quickly, especially rolling off of the line. So a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about with suspension is basically just going to help optimize it for your tire setup. But if you don't have a good tire setup, don't expect your suspension to just magically make everything work and give you gobs and gobs of grip out of nowhere. So now typically when people are talking about suspension, they're focused on, you know, the strut and spring setup. And believe it or not, the one that I recommend typically is the stock suspension. The stock suspension works really, really well. And the main thing that I usually tell people that convinces them is the world's fastest B58 uses the stock suspension. And so he's gone eight second quarter miles on stock suspension. I mean, the stock springs, stock shocks, everything, the way that it came from the factory. And while this might sound really impressive, I feel like he's really just leaning into the suspension properties that you want to have in order for your tires to work well in a straight line. So probably the biggest thing that the suspension helps is it allows you to run a taller tire. I know a lot of the super guys run either a 26 or a 28 inch tire. But if you're lowered at all, you are not going to fit a 28-inch tire. So running the stock suspension allows you to run a taller tire. That helps give you a better 60-foot, better 0 to 60, which, of course, translates to a faster quarter mile. So just being able to have more room to run a taller tire is a huge benefit with the stock suspension compared to a lowering kit. Another aspect of the stock suspension is relatively soft. And with a stock suspension, you're going to get a lot more weight transfer. Weight transfer helps optimize the traction that you're going to get on that rear tire. And even if you're running an all-wheel drive setup, you know, an X-Drive 340i, you're going to have a rear biased setup for your drivetrain. So getting as much weight over the rear wheels as possible and having a good tire setup in the back is going to help your car accelerate more quickly off the line. Or even if you're roll racing, if you tend to spin a little bit in second or third gear, that will help put extra pressure and weight on the rear tires so that you can get as much traction as possible. So overall, the stock suspension is typically best. I know a lot of people like to upgrade it because at higher speeds, it can potentially feel floaty or you know just give you a feeling that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. But generally for a quarter mile or regular roll racing, that stock suspension is going to give you the best performance down low, which translates to better quarter mile times and better trap speeds. So it really just depends on what you're prioritizing. Now, the next issue that I usually try to address is wheel hop. And this is something that you can experience when you're launching your car with a really sticky tire on a really sticky surface with too soft of a drivetrain setup. So what can end up happening is if your tire starts losing traction, instead of just like a smooth, clean burnout, it'll kind of hop and skip on the surface as it gets traction and loses traction over and over again. This is typically caused by oscillations that are happening inside of your drivetrain 
So you have really soft bushings and other components in your drivetrain to help, you know, reduce how much noise you're hearing in the cabin, help give you a softer and smoother ride, and just overall give you more compliance for the street. If you're focused on performance, these are things that you can upgrade with, in my opinion, a relatively minimal impact on, you know, kind of just the noise and overall comfort level of your vehicle while giving you a much more reliable and better performing setup. So you can upgrade things like your control arm bushings or your rear subframe bushings, and that'll help reduce the slop and things that can kind of shift around while your wheels are spinning. And that'll just help give it a more direct feel and help reduce the chance of wheel hop. Now, one thing a lot of people like to do is install a differential brace or differential bushings. This does also help, but I feel like this has a lower benefit compared to the control arm or the subframe. And it also can translate a lot more noise into the cabin because your differential is an actual rotating assembly and you're basically going to translate a lot more of that into the car. It's still something that's very manageable. A lot of people drive with them without issue, but just personally, I tend to upgrade the bushings and the control arm and the subframe first before I consider upgrading anything related to the differential itself. Now, if you are experiencing like a significant clunk in the rear of the car, anything where you can feel it shifting, even if you have subframe and control arm bushings installed, that would be the point where it makes more sense to upgrade your differential. Just keep in mind, you probably want to upgrade some of the other components as well, because this can put more stress on things like your drive shaft and your axles. It's basically taking some of that slop and absorbing some of that energy. And when you lock it down, it's going to translate more of that force to the other components. So just keep that in mind if you're going to lock down your differential and you probably want to consider beefing up the rest of your drivetrain as well. Now, one last thing that I like to talk about is getting a good alignment. We don't really think about this a lot, but alignments can really help improve the performance and stability of your car, especially when it comes to drag racing, because BMWs from the factory are typically designed to have good road manners and kind of help lean towards more of like the handling aspect. And there are a couple things that you can change to help it accelerate more quickly again, without touching your power or any other components. The first thing you want to do is minimize your camber. Unfortunately, up front, you can't really adjust it, but if you're running stock ride height or, you know, not too significant of a lowering kit, then you'll still have a pretty low amount of camber up front. That's completely fine. In the rear, typically the lower spec is like around negative 1.5 degrees. You can try to go down to maybe negative one degrees or so, and that should give you a little bit better traction when you're actually launching off the line. Just keep in mind, more camber does help give the car stability. So if you ever do lose traction and feel your car kind of swaying left to right, having some camber can help keep the car straight and just easier to control. But if you know what you're signing up for, it's definitely something that can help the car accelerate more quickly in a straight line with you know minimal impact on other aspects of daily driving. Now, one thing I hear a lot is people say they want no camber, and that's absolutely not the case. I know sometimes you might see like funny cars or dedicated drag cars when they're jacked up. They actually have like positive camber, and the whole goal of this is that when the car launches, it'll squat and increase some camber. And so hopefully at that point, the camber is completely square and the wheels are, you know, flat and tires get as much contact patch as possible. But for a street car, that definitely doesn't make sense. Minimizing it is appropriate, but you don't want to chase zero because that's going to make the car extremely difficult to drive, especially if you have any issues where you potentially lose traction. It can get bad really quickly. So I recommend having some camber. Just minimize it so that you're getting as much tire patch as possible, and that'll help also improve your control in case something happens and you lose a little bit of traction. The other thing that you can adjust is toe, and you can actually can adjust this in the front and in the rear. And I typically just recommend zero toe. The whole goal is to basically reduce how much toe you have so that the wheels are as free as they can be to just roll straight forward. If you have a little bit of toe in or even toe out, that basically adds rolling resistance and friction inside of the tire. Not only does it make the tire wear more, but you basically need more power to turn the wheels over. So having zero toe just helps things accelerate quickly. Especially if you're going in a straight line, you just want the wheels pointed straight forward, and that will give you the best opportunity to get the best performance times possible. Now, I have heard of some people trying to bias their toe a little bit to compensate for when the car is launching, because the front's going to lift and the rear is going to squat, and that is going to change your toe a little bit. 
but in both cases, the car tows in slightly. So the front will tow in a little bit when it goes up and the rear will tow in a little bit when it goes down. And this is just based on the suspension geometry that, you know, came from BMW. The only reason why I wouldn't recommend adding tow out to the vehicle so that it kind of squares up when you launch is because the opposite is going to happen when you hit the brakes. And what you don't want to do is get this crazy time and then at the end of the quarter mile you hit the brakes and the car tows out. That's going to make it feel extremely unsteady and difficult to control and you just don't really want to be in a scenario like that. With zero tow I still find it to be pretty manageable but with tow out that's where sometimes you could see people like kind of shaking the steering wheel trying to keep things straight when they're slamming on the brakes. It's just a very unsteady feeling and that's something I typically recommend. Now I want to end on a nice controversial topic that I've been talking about a lot recently and that's an LSD. A lot of people ask me will an LSD help them get better performance times. In my opinion an LSD is probably the last thing that you want to do on your car. The reason I feel this way is because an LSD is designed to help bias traction between the left and the right wheel. If your left wheel doesn't have traction then it'll push more power to the right and vice versa. When you're racing in a straight line, your car does not have a significant difference in friction or traction from the left to the right. So when you're launching your car without an LSD, you're not going to see as big of an improvement with an LSD installed. Majority of that's going to come from running a good tire. So I know a lot of people disagree with me or feel like that can't be the case. And I will say there are some other benefits that you can get from an LSD. It'll help you get a more consistent burnout. And it can also help improve the stability of the car if you are losing traction. But if you're focused just completely on getting fastest time going from A to B, an LSD isn't going to net you a significant benefit. And to be honest, most people that are asking me this are approaching me like, you know, I've got 650 wheel horsepower and I'm running all season tires. Will an LSD help me hook first? And that kind of goes back to my original statement. You know, none of this stuff magically makes the car improve in traction or gain a bunch of speed. These are all things that have to work with a good tire setup in order for it to be effective. So if you're losing traction because you're not running a good tire, that's going to be the first thing that you want to upgrade. And something like an LSD is honestly going to be one of the last. So yeah, hopefully this video helps you out if you guys are, you know, more dedicated to straight line racing. I know that's not really the main thing that I'm focused on, but these are just the things that I've picked up over time since I have drag raced a little bit. And obviously I posted my roll racing video earlier this year. So there are a lot of aspects of it I care about, some things I don't. So there are a lot of different things that you can do, especially if you just have a feel for what you want from your car. You can adjust it with whatever makes the most sense to you. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable and gives you confidence in the car. Just keep in mind that everything has a little bit of a trade-off. Some things that work really well on a track don't work really well on the street and vice versa. It's really just up to you to kind of decide where you are on that spectrum so that you can decide the best setup for you and the specific way you use your car. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.